Okay. Sounds good. Uh, you got questions, go ahead and uh, holler out during the presentation. I'd like to acknowledge our other member, Eric Prewey is a member of North Hennepin Squadron. So he uh, he's with Solar Patrol. And when he's one of the more active persons in that squadron. So we'll go through what Solar Air Patrol is. A lot of people never hear about us, yet we're out there in every state and very busy. So Minnesota Wing Solar Air Patrol has a uh, facility at South St. Paul Airport, KSGS, if you're a pilot. And uh, we're currently also building a uh, training classroom there. Uh, to get more training done. And then we have four group headquarters organized geographically uh, through the state and 24 squadrons through the state. Uh, our fact sheet and those that never seen infrared from drone on the right here is a daylight infrared drone picture highlighted with the camera. So one of our drones, the Maverick 2 Enterprise Dual, a uh, great piece of machinery because it uh, operates two coincidental, coincidental cameras at the same time, so we can do this and see it. So uh, 2002, just uh, what did CAP do nationwide? Well, they did 219 uh, million, uh, 265, $664 worth of volunteer services. Total hours flown was 95,182. We had 525 search and rescue missions last year. And I'll tell you that we have most of our missions now, we don't get out the door because we have a cell phone forensic team. And if we can get somebody to report that person missing and we can get the police report number net, we can uh, start searching for their cell phone immediately. And we collect live data. We don't have to search for it on uh, cell phone towers. We can pretty much get on it immediately. And that's credited with most 151 lives we saved last year. The 391 fines are when we uh, get a ELT and that's the beacons that are in the aircraft that can go off inadvertently or whatever, or some mechanic does it, but uh, most of our ELT searches are for aircraft that uh, somebody did something wrong with. And we had 35 disaster relief missions. Most of them down south were all the hurricanes and that. Um, in Minnesota, I just ran this the 27th, we have 834 senior members. That's people over 18 years of age, 706 cadet members and cadets are uh, the people that are under 21 and they're in training great group of people. It's great for having them do things because they're more active than our senior members. And the uh, paid staff, we really have uh, just one corporate administrator now that he's working remote and a maintenance contractor takes care of our aircraft. So the equipment, this might be important to you. Uh, we're down to 16 aircraft in the state. We had 19, some of them aged out, but then uh, some of them got moved because it seems like down south, they're getting more disasters than we are. So currently we have six Cessna 182s and five of them are Garmin G1000 equipped. Doesn't really mean much to you what that Garmin 1000 is, but it gets us there more accurately. And we can use that Garmin to program some of our searches, keep us on course. So basically the plane's flying the search, not the pilot. And we have tests, uh, 10 Cessna 172s. We use 172s mostly for primary training for cadets and for some of our newer pilots, but they're still willing and able to go up and fly missions. And we're up to 25 small unmanned aerial systems known as SUAS. Uh, two of them with infrared sensors, and I'm getting a third one tomorrow. Uh, we have one uh, sailplane uh, we use. Uh, for training cadets or just for training pilots. Uh, uh, you, you remember Sullenberger, he was able to land that biggest glider in the Hudson because he was a sailplane or glider pilot. And we have 24 position, uh, passenger vehicles. Oop. So here's kind of a makeup of our map. Uh, we're pretty well covered Southern kind of mid-state, but when we get up to the Northern part, it's sometimes a, uh, great trip for us to get to the border. And uh, 
we've got more calls to go to the border lately and that and sometimes uh our canadian friends can help us if it's neil t at least give us a hint where it's at or we can do an airport search by calling the airports or seeing what's going on but once in a while we got to get up there our longest search was one time in duluth where we were up there two weeks still haven't found that person so uh cp's gotten into trying to develop EOCs, emergency operation centers throughout the state. We are building the one at Hutchinson Airport. Uh, it's hangar is currently under construction, will be done probably in June. We're hoping to get the rest of the facility done. Uh, as with everybody else, the legislatures in uh, Minnesota have not passed a bonding bill, don't know if they will. So we're wondering if everything's gonna go to be paid for by cash. And at South St. Paul, we're adding a classroom to that facility, which was basically a storage hangar for aircraft and equipment. And that'll help us uh, get some local training done. And we are training all our ground teams in US National Grid and encourage them to put my USNG on their phones and that. So all the scenarios we're developing now are using US National Grid and we're using SARTOPO, if you heard of that, you may know it as CalTOPO, to uh, coordinate all that and get our uh, national grid uh, maps done for us. This is the Hutchinson facility. This is where the building will be when it's done. It'll be able to house up to 200 cadets and we'll be able to do training there that we used to do at Camp Ripley. And that way, if it's our facility, we can do it almost anytime this also can be a eoc uh, should something happen to the metro area a lot of departments have uh, contacted us including mindot about moving things to this facility which is out of the metro area and kind of central state so what kind of missions can we do uh we have air force missions we are part of the air force auxiliary part of the total force they call it so we're under Air Force North and we get missions assigned to us. The search and rescue missions come from Air Force Rescue Coordination Center. And that's mostly for missing persons and missing aircraft. So they will notify us. We do about 90% of the interior search and rescue for aircraft and or persons in the United States. Uh, so we do search and rescue, mostly aircraft and some personnel. Usually the personnel, the sheriff's office gets involved and when they can't find them, usually a, a while later, we end up helping. Uh, air defense intercept targets. It is fun, if, uh, meaning kind of crazy fun to have an F-16 chasing up your tailpipe while you're out there trying to hide from them. And we do this quite often because the F-16s out of Duluth, 148th Fighter Squadron, have to have training intercepting small aircraft. It was kind of evident during the Super Bowl 52, we did a lot of training with them, yet there was still idiots that decided they would go up and fly even though they weren't supposed to. And most of them are not flying now. <laughs> uh, disaster relief and reconnaissance, we have done uh, if some tornado pictures, I'll show you that. And we're now flying some pre-flood missions just to get us better at doing it and try to get a, a kind of a baseline of where the waters are now. Uh, small UAS, air, you know, the aerial systems, mostly we're doing video mapping and SAR. We could do them both together. I'll kind of explain that uh, later. We've gotten into a new way of searching for people. So our mission really gets started when a sheriff or our AFRCC or our NOC, which is the National Operations Center calls us. And we check in with the person in charge. We try to find out where they want us. That's the last known point. This search here is up in Pine County for a lost hunter, uh, which they still have not found. And we try to do everything at home before we get out the door. So as much detail as we can get from somebody gets us out the door and we can get everything pre-programmed and get our maps put in and everything in case we get out there. This was a internet denied area. So I'm glad we did it ahead of time or our drones would have gone, huh? 
So, uh, and when we get out there, first thing we do is a 360 search of the area to make sure we got nothing that's going to harm us or we can look at egress access in it. More than not, what we're looking for is if other people are out there that we have to worry about that may interrupt our mission. And once the air is checked, uh, we usually go into what the request is. When somebody requests us to do a mission, they own all the video and data. We do not own it. We usually give it to them. After a 30 day check, we uh, may scrub our records, but it's their data. So if you're a customer, you get it. Uh, I know we've had, they've had issues with police departments and that, because if a police department takes data and that if they don't have an active investigation under Minnesota law, they usually got to scrub it in seven days. So we are actually working with some police departments doing training flights for them because they can't even keep their training videos. So we let them have ours. So modes of operation, drone deploys, what we're currently using. We're looking at another software called Locate, it's L-O-C-8. That one can actually uh, do some post-production where it can look at RGB and give us certain colors in that. Uh, they're using it now in Missouri to look for somebody that went in the river. Uh, but we can go, we usually do drone deploy. And what's nice about that, if we're out doing it, the software if the uh, will keep it very accurate. It stitches it all together in that. When we come back and it's done on post-processing, it's all geo-referenced. And if we're out there and our batteries get low, uh, we can bring the thing back and get the battery changed. And it remembers where it left off. And then uh, these free flight or hasty searches, point of interest, this just happens to be a fun one. Uh, we're up in Granite Lake by Annandale. Uh, we heard a bunch of people saying that they kept pulling the axles off of trailers that boats that were backing in. So I got up early one morning and looked at it. And if, as you can see, there's a big gap here and a big gap here. And actually, uh, when I zoomed in, you could see somebody's axle in this part right here. So uh, given that to the Lake Association, and got them a new ramp fixed. Uh, hailing, we got some with speakers so we can warn people. And we also can use it to find people. And overwatch is something that police and fire are doing now. They may put a drone up just to see what activity they got around them, if people are sneaking in or if uh, they don't have a secure area. So past missions, uh, we worked with the weather service. We gave them the Fairbolt tornado, uh, and I'll have pictures of that shortly. Blaine TPC, Corey ain't on, but uh, for a couple of years, uh, after they got all the tents up at the Blaine Golf Course, we took pictures of it. She used the pictures so she could have it uh, associated with maps. And if anybody got lost or somebody got hurt, they could say, well, where are you? And they had the tents numbered and they could get to them. And we're working Minnesota Task Force One. We've done it a couple of years now. Uh, we've done multiple uh, search and rescue trainings with them and damage assessment. We did the state fairgrounds last time and this is part of it. And this is just our first overhead shot from our aircraft. And this is sometimes how we present the photos to you with this detail on it, who it is, which direction and that. And this was done uh, with the, the plane up above at uh, just over a thousand feet above the fairgrounds and the detail, if, if I could zoom in, is very good. And then pictures of the Minnesota floods. Uh, this up here is what Redwood Falls. Believe it or not, this is multi pictures that were stitched together. And if I had the actual here, you could zoom in onto it and you could actually see little things in the water. Uh, this one here was, they were concerned about ice jamming a, uh, one of the uh, dams. Here's your fair bolt. And uh, this poor guy has got a beautiful plane sitting on top of his hangar. Uh, so we were in the air right after the tornado went through and got these pictures and we saw the fire truck down there uh, evaluating it. So what we did is we checked the runway, made a low pass, figured out we could land, landed and handed the fire chief the uh, SD card. And here's Corey's project with the TPC where they got all the buildings here. Uh, we had better shots, but this is a high shot. And this was tough because it's right next to the uh, Anoka County Airport, just a mile north. 
And to get drone approval was tough. To get aircraft approval was basically talk to the tower and do it. So we find sometimes uh, using aircraft is faster than trying to get a drone out there. And then talk about tight spots. This is the uh, Mississippi River right downtown Minneapolis. And so we were able to get permission to fly real tight during one of the floods. And this right here is also cedar. We flew the whole Minnesota Mississippi River all the way from south, all the way up through Minneapolis and uh, got all the way up to about Anoka. We got them done very quickly for the, uh, uh, I think that was for the Army Corps of Engineers at that time. So how do we do this? We use drone deploy. It's a, uh, a software we use to pre-program things. The one down below is one that's already done. This is a background map uh, from Google Earth. This would be the new map. And if I had live here, I could zoom in and you could actually see some footprints in that. But what we do is we're doing this search now for a lost person. Uh, access to here is limited. This is snow and water down in there. People stomping in there would go through. So we video map this. And then what we did is after we we're done, we have people that are good at crowdsourcing all these things and looking for detail. We actually put it, gave them permission to go look at this and then go ahead and tell us if they saw anything and map it. And all I found uh, out of the whole crowdsource was somebody lost their backpack, but we're still looking for that individual. So post-production, uh, we capture all the photos. We get them all by doing this type of mapping up here. Then we can go ahead and do post-production, whether we can look for certain colors, uh, depends on the software we use, or we can create a 3D model. As if it were a real object, we could be able to rotate it, look at the height and everything. Uh, we can zoom in for looking for the smaller objects. Then it can be stitched together for a panorama if you just want something to put on your wall or we go ahead and send it into an ortho mosaic georeference model, uh, which this is down here. This is our training center at Camp Atterbury in Indiana. And this one's done by a very highly detailed camera, but part of the project they do is they like to pick this corner. And once you get it all done, you zoom in and you see what kind of materials are in there. You can go ahead and measure it. Then you can go ahead and try to tell them what kind of dump truck is going to come in to haul it away. And they might even ask you what uh, is the brand of the beer can down there. So it's kind of interesting. But uh, we're starting to use crowdsourcing for more of our stuff, either whether we send a live shot or later on we put them all in a tray and let people look at it. That's how we handled the last hurricanes through Civil Air Patrol. And uh, they had over... I think I'm, I'm trying to remember the last one down in Mississippi there, we're doing it now. And they have groups currently look at it. What the good thing about it is, we've been trained to kind of do uh, the assessments and we can have an assessment done while everybody else is working and get that assessment to FEMA who can then declared as a disaster faster because it then meets the threshold for that county or for that state. Here's the birds we kind of play with. Uh, we, we're getting the X2D. I haven't had much hands on an app, but it's coming tomorrow. And that has uh, infrared and regular camera. Skydio is something kind of new. That thing's a crazy thing. Uh, it doesn't, it kind of flies autonomously on its own. Its camera will go completely up so you can do bridge inspection. It's awesome for avoidance, but it does not like low daylight. Mavic Mini, we've used that in buildings. We also use that to train our pilots since the Mini actually controls the same as the other Mavericks or the DJI products. And my go-to one is this Enterprise Dual. Uh, we found that successful in low light. Speaker, you can talk to somebody. We actually put the uh, lights on and we did the basement of the cattle barn at the state fair, completely dark. And we were able to navigate that and find all the people there. We didn't have to use infrared because all the people hiding were firefighters with the 3M tape on. So the minute we turned the lights on, we found them. Uh, for a customer, usually uh, we want to MOU. That's a mem memo of understanding. And it's basically an agreement or a contract 
that we have with an agency to provide services. Currently, their aircraft is 170 an hour per Hobbs, and Hobbs means that's when the propeller is spinning. So that's when we would uh, be charging uh, when the propeller is spinning, but that includes the crew and all the support. And UAS, uh, there's, I think, at $30 an hour. They haven't given us the update yet. And that's flight hours from the time the props are spinning to the time the prop is sitting still. And that is also the full ground crew and support. And then we ask if we're using our vans to transport around uh, people that you just fuel them. And we may have an active training mission we can use to get some of these activities. I used to always scan missions we or have missions available. We do now. And then we call them practice missions. But we need the training. And you guys may need the photos. So we may go fly them. And because uh, uh, the best way to use COP, uh, CAP re resources is have an MOU with us. Um, and that can be done. Uh, by us got it, filling out a form and the agency signing it and we ship it up to our headquarters and they approve it and all the lawyers look at it and say it's good and then we have an MOU and that gets us out the door quick because the mission will already be established. But if government agencies need something, we highly suggest they call our National Operations Center and uh, contact them by the phone number or by the uh, CAP address. And I think that's all I got. My cell's up there, and I'll stand by for any questions. Everybody's smart today. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, yeah. back up and, and um, could you emphasize the point about the, tr the, the active training? Because I think that might have got glossed over. So that might be helpful to people to understand that. So um, what we did for Corey is uh, we already had a training mission uh, established up there. And I think it was North Hennepin that flew it, Eric. I'm not sure if you were on yeah. that one. We've I done it. Uh, yeah. So we did it two times. And what I do is um, she had asked could we do this and i said you know what we haven't done much of it so let's do it as training because we want to get better at what we're doing and this wasn't an emergency need now thing so we could have done numerous flights uh, we did actually fly the drone up there too and found out that uh, to video map that area which she wanted about a uh, two square mile area uh, it would have taken about four or five days with the drone um, it took approximately what hour and a half with the uh, aircraft, I if that. Not, yeah, <laughs> and we had all the pictures she wanted. She said they're great quality. We even got areas that were outside the area. They had just reconstructed streets up there too, so they wanted to know which way the streets went and stuff like that. So, if somebody had a request, let's say uh, somebody wanted us to uh, video map something or just get pictures of an area or maybe they got a housing development they want to do before and after pictures you know because they uh wanted or during the progress they want to see what it looks like uh that's great uh when we do the drone and we do the photos for that you'll get a file you can put on google earth so it's kind of cool you can flip back and forth before and after if you got an old google earth picture a lot of people like to use that. Here's what was, here's what is. And we use some of that Google mapping. Sometimes we're uh, doing some flooding because they go back and look at old flood data and old floods to see what might happen for new ones. So did but, that answer it? Well, I think, help me out here. As I remember it, the point is, is if it's an active training mission for CAP, that you're doing something you would have done anyway, and it aligns with what a community may need, there's really no cost to the community. Is that correct? Or do exactly. I have that exactly. Okay. Yeah. And in some cases, in emergency, there's no cost for the first 24 hours. And many times we get FEMA picks us up, you know, on that. Uh, in the Fairbolt case, uh, we were already airborne, so we just slid over and took the pictures. Uh, and in some cases, uh, we may have an MOU already with those agencies. But if they give us the request, we'll find a way to get her done. How's that? There, there we go. I like the attitude. 
Yep. The important part is for them to be remembering that you're out there. You have amazing amount of capability. Pick up the phone, talk to you about what might be possible, and then submit it into the, the normal request chain. Would that be a way to think about it? Yeah, or just contact me directly for the questions to be answered. And then um, usually I'll throw it in a mission and at uh, the difficulty we have is if we need to move a body that's non-CAP, then I have to go through some more hoops because they allow us to, you know, crash with people that we know, but people they don't know, they want to know who they are. <laughs> so uh, we haven't had any crashes, but we kind of tease it. It's a lot of hoops to jump through unless you're already part of an agency that has an MOU. So any questions for Tom? This is your opportunity. Yeah, I got one. Uh, this is Brad Bolton from Morrison County, the GIS coordinator up here. Yeah. Um, we had a missing person on, within the last several years. What uh, what kind of response time do you guys have for coming out to help out with something like that? And it depends on what you need and what the weather is. Uh, if by chance uh, we got good flying weather, uh, we can probably get you uh, aircraft with uh, you know, if, usually I'd say an hour and a half, but it might be two hours and that to get one in. Uh, Eric's nodding his head. I'm a mission pilot. Uh, North Hennepin's quick on the draw. Uh, NOCA's pretty decent. Uh, so, and we have squadrons. As further north you go, they don't get as much out the door or they may live farther from the area. So we can get that done. Ground teams might take a little longer. We might say three or four hours. But the key is call us earlier than later, uh, because a lot of times when we get it, they've exhausted all other resources and now we're getting called. And when I go out with the drone and I'm trying to find those precious footprints that should be virgin to everything, I go out there and I see the ground evidence destruction team has given me more than I can handle, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, I, after that, I just say, uh, give us a call if you need it uh, and we'll work something out or we could do co-training together too. We're always looking for something new to do.